Good evening, everyone. I would like to call the June 1st, 2023 business meeting of the Croton Harmon Board of Education to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Born and unborn. Recommended action that the Board of Education approves the agenda. So moved. Second. On the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. All right. Uh, we will now then move into my report. So good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you to those of us joining in person um, and those are, who are watching via live stream. Uh, it's hard to believe that it is already June. Uh, but while the next few weeks are sure to be busy uh, for many, I hope that everyone will have a very joyful end to the school year. There are quite a few events on the calendar coming up, and I will leave the high school events to Molly. Um, but I did want to highlight a few things that are happening soon at CET and PBC. Um, so tomorrow night uh, is cultural night at the CET field, and it'll begin at 6 p.m. This is a really wonderful event where families in the community will share their culture through music, food tasting, crafts, and it ends with a fashion show. Um, also, the CET Spring Conference, uh, Spring Concert Parent Performance will be on Wednesday, June 7th at 6.30 p.m. The CET Kindness Club will be hosting their Fantabulous Fair on Thursday, June 8th from 5 to 7 p.m. And the incoming kindergarten orientation will be on June 12th at 7 p.m. Uh, all over at PDC. Uh, next week will be the last spirit week of the year. You can see what's scheduled for each day of the week in Mr. Plotkin's email. Um, and the end of the year events and school trips are coming up for all of our middle school grades as well. Uh, I wanted to also highlight that in athletics, all of our spring varsity teams were identified as New York, um, I can name NYS, PHSAA, <laughs> I don't know. I can't even tell you what that all stands for, um, for schol as scholar athlete teams. With this accomplishment, high Croton Harmon High School was named as a school of excellence for the third straight year. So our spring teams were baseball, softball, boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, golf, boys tennis, boys track and field, and girls track and field. And then lastly, I wanted to highlight that at our next meeting on June 15th, Prior to the meeting, we'll be honoring the many, many volunteers who have given their time to benefit our schools this year. And then during the meeting, we'll, we will have a presentation from our architects, uh, KG and D, who will be showing us some schematic plans for the future facilities project. So please be sure to join us. Um, that concludes my report, and we will now begin our first hearing of the public. Um, Sarah, we, the sure. great, um, that's fantastic um, about the Scholar Athlete team. Do you know what the criteria is? Do you to um, be identified as a color athlete team? I do not know the, the criteria. I can get that for you, though. I could get that and report it back to the board. Okay. I, I believe it's what is the like a, an average of somewhere in the high 80s or 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, chief, uh, 90 or above. 90 or above. Or average. You know, the average. I see. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's great. Okay. All right. So we ask that anyone who would like to address the board. Uh, use the podium and state your, your name. You can give your email or contact information on the sign up sheet. Uh, and we ask that you keep it almost to three minutes. I'd like to thank the uh, members of the board and the administration for their sincere condolences and a death of my son. Uh, my eldest son died at age 51. He died as we'd always like, we would all like to die. He was at peace with the Lord and uh, in the arms of his wife with his mother holding his hand and his children as always. It was a privilege to be there. But thank you for your condolences, condolences and sympathies. As you reorganize your board, I would like to remind you that the state of New York and this school, in historical perspective, has participated, like the medical profession and every profession, in stupid ideas, poor initiatives, um, terrible ideas, um, 
money wasting ideas and that many of them are prevalent as we speak and are being pushed in schools throughout the country. Various versions of CRT, masquerading as uh, diversity, yeah. equity, inclusion. And the biggest threat, which is a moral and a spiritual threat, is transgenderism, uh, which I'll pass out the guy I call the um, American, American Mengele. He was originally from Australia, but he practiced medicine out of uh, at Johns Hopkins University. Uh, I call him the American Mengele because if you don't remember Mengele, was a doctor. Um, so, uh, he was well respected in Germany, especially as the guy that trained him on twins, experimenting on twins. And that's what John Money did. And it's not just the twins everybody hears about, it's about thousands of children. So John Money is the founder of transgenders in the United States. He should be right up there with the quacks that push lobotomies, um, experimenting on prisoners, going to Central America, experimenting on drugs in Africa. He's one of those scientists, which America has had quite a few, very well respected. If you heard of how they experiment with a polio vaccine, you would lose your lunch back in the 30s. This comes with a lot of ramifications um, and they need to be examined. This month of all months, because of the way they've redesignated this month, I think it used to be mental health month, now it's got a different name. So their initiatives probably in these schools right now as we talk, which I don't know about, but you ought to take a look at some of these things. Like you ought to, you ought to take a look at what the pride parades look like, the nudism the Man by Love Association, the promotion of pedophilia. I'm, not, I'm talking about part and parcel parades and their agendas now with tagging onto transgenderism. My last comment on this is if it's a sin to dress up in blackface and pretend you're a black man, shouldn't it be a sin to dress up as a woman and pretend you're a woman? We will now, uh, I will hand it over to Superintendent Walker for his report. Thank you, Sarah. Good evening, everyone who's uh, watching at home and everyone here in person. Uh, as Sarah referenced earlier, this is an incredibly busy and equally so an incredibly special time of year in this school district and in the school districts across the country. I've been doing some reflecting recently. And, uh, on Monday, I had a chance uh, to go home, actually, to my parents' house. And, I had a chance to see them in a while to celebrate Memorial Day and walked into their kitchen and saw on the front of it, maybe the same fridge I, that they had when I was when I was there. But, uh, there's a, a picture of me that has been on their fridge for 25 years, and it's it's me hugging my dad as I was graduating from high school. My dad was the board president when I graduated, and so he handed me my diploma. And it just really put me in this kind of nostalgic, reflective mood about um, what the an amazing and unique time this is in school. And the dichotomy between all of the, the pressures of the end of something um, and end of year reports and checklists and all of the things that we all have to do before the students leave. And then all of the amazing and special events that we get a chance to be a part of. And I, I just wanted to say publicly what an honor it is on behalf of the entire administrative team. Uh, and I know the board as well to be present at all of these events that become refrigerator moments in households across the community and become memories for families and for young people that they will take with them in some cases for the rest of their lives. And it's such, there aren't too many professions anywhere where you get a chance to be present regularly for that kind of momentous occasion, whether it's high school graduation or uh, moving up day or the final concert at CET or, Broadway Kids or Cultural Night Tomorrow Night. Those are hallmark rites of passage in this community for our kids and for our families. And so the theme tonight is that kind of refrigerator moment. And I thank Greg because I came into, I went into his office yesterday morning when I realized it was already Wednesday of this week and said, Greg, I have no slides prepared. Can you put together some stuff for tomorrow night? Greg put together 18 slides, which are beautiful. And so we 
prepared to move forward with that. And about 3.30 this afternoon, I called Greg, who was in the car driving over here, I think, and said, Greg, I want to change the theme. Uh, I want to add some new slides. And within 15 minutes, you had done that too, sir. So so thank you for that. Uh, and as always, for, for your talent on this. Uh, I wanted to begin, though, uh, just again by reflecting for a moment on uh, all of the outstanding people, right? The, the thing that makes our schools so special are the people, the young people, and the adults uh, who are the heart of, of our system. We got a chance to honor some of those really, really special tigers the last time we were together in this room. Uh, and so, I again, wanted to thank them and congratulate them as they reach these exciting moments in their careers. And had a chance uh, recently to attend the uh, daytime performance of the PVC Spring Concert along with John, uh, and I believe I can speak for John, who I, I know has much, a much more refined musical <laughs> ear than I do. Uh, but we turned to each other afterwards and said that that, we think, was the best middle school concert we had seen in perhaps ever. Uh, from start to finish, just outstanding musical performances, fun, uh, engaging. The, the future of the music program is incredibly bright. And I, I want to thank, of course, for the student musicians and the faculty for making it so. Um, I'm sorry, was, was that Mr. Plotkin or something? That is, in <laughs> fact, Mr. Plotkin. I, would, I can't do justice to how he performed. The, the, the sounds he was making, I won't even try, but I know it exists on video because some members of the board sent it to me. So I will, I'll show it to you. I'll put it off my phone later. Phenomenal <laughs> song from the Muppet Show. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, of course, also, we talk about rites of passage uh, for kids in this community, Broadway kids, uh, and what Marlena Horton does uh, with uh, an exceptionally talented group of students every year is a special and unique thing, and it was a privilege to get a chance to attend that uh, that performance uh, during the day with John uh, again as well. Also, had a chance recently to to follow our baseball team, including down to to Blindbrook uh, for part of their their game as they um, pursued a sectional championship. Though one game short, but um, had a chance to to speak to them briefly before one of the games and just shared with them that same that same concept that. They have, a, they have a community behind them. Uh, when we have teams and young people who experience that kind of success, it lifts everybody in the community um, and that they together have made memories and been bonded in a way that they will remember always. Um, and I hope that was meaningful for them. It certainly was meaningful for, for us to have a chance to, to follow them. Congratulations to Eric Rosen and the whole team. And Harry Kahn, by the way, was a sophomore. Starting pitcher, it's going to be a very difficult next couple of years in this section to get any hits off there. He is a <laughs> really, really good young pitcher. So, future Tiger baseball also very bright. Want to again uh, congratulate also our uh, Destination Imagination DI team. Uh, we attended Globals and finished ninth in their division. And I know I've shared before that uh, it's my belief that the core elements involved in DI collaboration, creativity, critical thinking communication, improvisation, uh, rapid assessment, and, and change based on that, that reflection and feedback. Those shouldn't be just experiences that certain students in our system have. That should be the foundation for the experience of every student in our system. So I just have so much respect and admiration for uh, the students and their coaches. Uh, so congratulations very much to, to these special Tigers as well. And another rite of passage, right? Our eighth graders had a chance very recently to tour the high school with their big buddies. Uh, had a chance to be there uh, for part of that. And you can see that, you know, I remember it. I remember walking through uh, my high school for the first time and that, that feeling of being somewhat intimidated and yet also excited and anxious for what's about to come. Uh, and you can see it on their faces as well. And the, our system does such a great job of supporting young people through these transitions. And of course, we look forward to seeing, I guess it's the class of 2027 uh, at the high school in September. Also, there seems to be a, an annual rite of passage as well. Our fourth grade chorus with Marlena goes to uh, the Music in the Parks competition, wins, it seems, every year. <laughs> uh, not to make light of that accomplishment. They are just exceptionally, exceptionally good. Uh, and then have a chance to spend some time at, at Dorney Park. So. 
Uh, I've got, a, got these pictures shared with me uh, with from some very happy uh, faculty and, and family. So I want to congratulate those uh, young Tigers as well. I hope those are some memories that they will take with them for a long time. And also had a chance very recently of calling these meals with Maddie, but we all So <laughs> last week it was dinner uh, with Maddie and Hannah Reynas, and of course, wonderful company from Mark Maxim and Sarah at the Lower Hudson Council School Superintendent's Scholastic Achievement Dinner, uh, celebrating outstanding, inspired scholars from across uh, the region, multiple counties. It was really just such a pleasure. You can feel the potential in the room with that much talent in one place at one time last week. So that was Wonderful. And this morning, John and I had a chance to attend the Hudson Valley Gateway Chamber of Commerce Scholarship Breakfast, again with Maddie, this time with uh, Grandma, uh, who made the trip from Western Pennsylvania. And so we had a really good opportunity to talk about uh, the rite of passage that is graduation and this time in the lives of young people and how excited Maddie is for what comes next. And she's earned all of it. So congratulations to her, to all of the scholars. Uh, and we look forward to these next three weeks. So making some wonderful, wonderful memories in our system. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so now I'll turn it over to Molly Lovett for her final <laughs> exhibition report. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> there's, been, there's a bunch of end of year stuff coming up in high school. Tomorrow, bright and early at 8.30 in the morning is the awards assembly. Uh, it's going to be a school-wide presentation of all the awards. A lot of the juniors are going to be getting book awards and then some more awards. Um, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. is the CHHS Theater Class production. Um, and seniors, it's time to pick up our caps and gowns um, and our yearbooks on, on Wednesday, June 7th for any time from noon to 3 p.m. The Science Research, Research Symposium is also on Wednesday, June 7th at 5 p.m. And then for more, and then getting into the end of the year things for the seniors is our prom on June 8th. Uh, we have the red carpet event for photos and our send off at around 3 to 3.30. Uh, the senior sports award night is on June 15th at 5. And Wednesday, June 21st is senior day. It's packed. So at 9 a.m. is the senior walk at the elementary school. So you have all the teachers and little kids cheering us on, which is really cute. Uh, and then that had, and then that's followed by graduation rehearsal. There's a lunch, and then there's a yearbook signing, and then there's going to be a showing of the senior video that many members of the senior class made. And then finally, the CHHS graduation ceremony is on Thursday, June 22nd at 6 p.m. And the tent opens at 4:45. So if you want certain seats, you should get there around then because you can't do any sort of reserving. Uh, the alternate date in case of severe weather is the next day, same time. And if you are handicapped, there will be handicapped parking available. And there's a golf cart to transport people from the lot who will have trouble walking from there to the tent. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. All right. We'll now move into new business. Uh, recommended action of the Board of Education accepts the results of the May 16, 2023 school budget votes and <laughs> school board election as presented. Second. On the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stain? Motion carries. And again, I just want to thank our community for coming out and uh, supporting and, and um, making your voice heard and voting. We'll now move into uh, 3.2. Recommended action result that the Board of Education of Croton Harmon Union Free School District hereby authorizes uh, retaining Paul Gibbons to provide consulting services relating to buildings and grounds operations of the school district on an as needed basis, not to exceed a total of 20 half days at a rate of $400 per half day, commencing on July 1st, 2023. So moved. Second. On the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. The recommended action of the Board of Education approves the public exchange agreement between Oracle and the Croton Harmon School District for cloud services as presented. <clears throat> so moved. Second. On the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 
motion carries. Recommended action that the Board of Education approves the request for proposal RFP bid award for hazardous material testing, sampling, and environmental monitoring consulting services for the $45.5 million capital improvement project to Quality Environmental Solutions and Technologies Quest as presented. So moved. Second. On the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Recommended action that the Board of Education approves the resolution rejecting construction bid contracts for the district wide roofing projects as presented. So moved. Second. On the question. On the question for Denise. Um, I note that, at least as you have reported to the board, the concern that resulted in this recommendation was both because of the absence of a number of bidders and the bids that we received and right. had yeah. been in our budget. Just wondering, because we had talked about doing this in the summer of 2023 because we were able to get things, you know, kind of get a jump on some of the other work. Is the, at least from our architects and construction manager, is the sense that this was really just a consequence of being rather late to the game and therefore most contractors were already booked? Or is this something that may create issues from the next summer? No, we feel that it was just the timing. So we went out with four bids, uh, one for each building and then the mechanical as well. And the contractor that bid on CET uh, was familiar with the building and had opportunity in his schedule. The other three bids, we only had one bidder. We didn't feel that it was a competitive bid. Mm -hmm. uh, so we only proceeded with, the, uh, with CET, but we are still a year ahead of schedule with the roofing at CET. So uh, though we weren't able to complete all of the, the roofing, uh, we got a very competitive bid for that project and we will be beginning that. Uh, we have our kickoff meeting tomorrow for that project. So yes, we will probably, we're going to feel the market out uh, in September. And then again, probably in December or January. If you go out too early, uh, before prevailing wages are determined, uh, you could lose momentum on the project. Mm -hmm. So we are going to take the guidance of our construction manager and architect on that and maybe uh, proceed uh, as early as December, uh, if not the ideal timing is usually January, February. Okay. Denise, yeah. can you talk about um, the uh, mechanical component, the chiller. Yeah, so the chiller, in order to install the chiller, it has to be done with the roofing because of what's involved. As you, you're familiar with PVC yeah. and the height of that roof. So we will you'll have to bring a crane in, etc. We had designed a chiller. So chillers are about uh 48 weeks out as far as turnaround time to receive one. So our architects recommended a multi-component chiller that we could acquire all of the components early on to try to get the project moving. So, um, so because we didn't do the roofing, we didn't award the chiller component. However, we even though we may wait until January or February to bid out the roofing, we are going to advance purchase the chiller so that we can. Second. On the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay, we'll now move into instructional personnel. Recommended action be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby appoints. Yi Feng Shu 1.0 FTE foreign language teacher as a lead replacement for Sophie Wang Palicelli 
at Croton Harmon High School, effective May 22nd, 2023 through June 30th, 2023, at an annual salary of $66,293 BA Step 5 prorated. So moved. Second. On the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Recommended action that the Board of Education amend the instructional personnel appointment of Derek Davis, item 6.2, on the May 16th, 2023 agenda, from a four-year probationary term to a three-year probationary term as presented. So moved. Second. On the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We will now move into donations. Recommended action that the Board of Education gratefully accepts a donation in the amount of $2,000 from Debbie and Ed Braddock as a contribution to the Braddock Family Award. So moved. Second. On the question? I'd just like to add that it, for anybody who's watching in um, the board documents, it says this is given to two graduating seniors that have com contributed to the community, performed community service, volunteered as a tutor, or a civic or volunteered for as a tutor or for a civic organization, um, and must be attending college, a vocational program, or training. And Debbie and, and Ed Braddock are longtime contributors to um, our scholarship programs here at the high school. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Recommended action that the Board of Education gratefully accepts a donation in the amount of $1,000 from the Croton Harmon High School Foundation, care of Barbara Albano, as a contribution towards a scholarship at Croton Harmon High School. So moved. Second. On the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. All right. Uh, and again, uh, thank you very much to our donors. Uh, it, it's incredibly appreciated, particularly at this time of year with the scholarships for our graduating seniors. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, we'll now move into the consent agenda. Recommended action that the Board of Education approves all items on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. On the question? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, on the non instructional appointment, it states that the district clerk, Denise Asaccia, is to be appointed effective July 31st, 2023. Mm -hmm. So, my question is um, if I remember correctly, our current district clerk had indicated her retirement on June 30th, 2000. No, no, no. July 28th is my, it's a Friday. And I, my retirement day is the 31st. So mm -hmm. the will be starting. All more month than you thought you had. <laughs> that creates a lot of interesting possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> be afraid, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> We, as, as we all know, though, Denise Basaccia has joined us this evening, so we're very excited and, and look forward to working with her in the coming months. So. Okay. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. All right. All right, and we will now move into the closing of the meeting. So we will have our second uh, hearing of the public. And if anyone would like to speak, you can leave the podium and please take your comments to three minutes. Kind of still thought on the um, challenge of this transgenderism surge. 
which is not a natural phenomenon, so much so that Norway has rescinded its policy on, on transgender operations and treatment. England closed down its main transgender clinic for the phenomenal abuses that occurred there. And the stories that come out of <clears throat> Boston Hospital, um, Vanderbilt Hospital in Tennessee, and uh, the hospital in St. Louis are truly horrific <laughs> in terms of both drug applications and surgical procedures on minor something we should all be ashamed of. It's like the syphilis experiment in the courts. Um, it applies to this school and other schools like it as when you demand pronouns, you have some teachers who demand pronouns. I have testimony from kids who are really offended by it and are, it really bugs them and their parents. I heard a bunch of kids talking the other day, 10 kids. It was, you should have been there looking for um, it affects safety in the bathrooms. You know, there are several schools in New York State being sued because their <clears throat> girls were assaulted by 17-year-old boys claiming to be girls in their bathrooms. We saw what happened in the Loud County school system when this happened. And the, and the uh, superintendent was fired and is now being investigated on criminal charges. Um, that's a big challenge. Um, the second aspect I would like to discuss is um, in line with Mr. Griffin's philosophy of every student is an activist. Now, I know what kind of activists we're talking about here. Um, you recently had, I believe, a student protest group, Take Back the Night. I'm just wondering if Take Back the Night dealt with extreme violence against women and older people in New York City because of the lousy um, bail policies of this state and other major city in the United States. And that the hundreds of shootings in Chicago, including 41 deaths over last weekend, um, whether that take back the neck up with those. When I was in Rye, I never thought this would happen. The, the newspaper commended a girl in my high school for writing on the subject of abortion, where abortion on girl babies, which much more prevalent than it was on boy babies, and how that was discriminatory. It amazed me that they ever got published. Hmm. And subsequently find out that there's 60 million girl babies missing in China. Hmm. And that in listening to the radio station, a senator from India said discrimination against women begins in a womb, because in India, the first children killed in the womb of the girl. We will now move into board reports. Uh, audit. Audit will be meeting in a couple weeks. I will report back to the next board meeting. Thank you very much. Communications. Communications will be meeting this Tuesday, mm -hmm. 5 p.m. in the district office. Mm -hmm. Um, for development, uh, we uh, did not meet at our, our last uh, meeting, but we will be meeting. No, I apologize for having to reschedule that. Thank you for your flexibility. Not a problem at all. Um, but I will say, just in terms of board development, um, we did send out uh, the link to the NISBA uh, board self evaluation. Um, and it would be wonderful if everybody could get those back uh, by June 15th. I think that would be that's good. That gives us two weeks from today um, in order to get those uh, filled out. The link that I sent you should be um, an editable PDF. So you can fill it out electronically and then just send those to the board development uh, team. So just email it to me and Anna. Uh, and then policy. Policy was scheduled to meet, did not because mm -hmm. members of the were not available. Mm -hmm. And we are going to endeavor to find a new meeting date in the near future because we do want to pick up some of the things where where we have uh, left off. So nothing else to report. Great. Um, we have that rounds it out. The uh, advocacy hasn't met. Um, so we'll move into polling the board. Does anyone have anything for polling? Um, 
Yeah. I was just going to say I'm happy to tag along onto Steve's sentiments and embracing all these moments uh, in the end of the year. I am about to uh, say farewell to CET as my fourth grader who's <laughs> on PUC. And um, it's a special time. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of, uh, you know, rush to schedule things. But I would just encourage everyone um, to take a deep breath, go to the next thing. <laughs> and enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things um, Molly had brought up during her report um, was the uh, Science Research Symposium that is next week. And I would encourage any board members who are able to attend to come because it's fascinating and the kids do an amazing job. It's really, really incredible. So if you can make it to that, I would highly recommend it. Um, also, I can, if I could make another plug for um, the West Putt uh, networking event that will be next Thursday. Um, if anyone would like to attend, Tracy can register you. And uh, that's all up. Uh, I will just make a shameless plug for the um, fourth grade chorus uh, because I will not be able to attend the June 13th meeting because I will be uh, watching the fourth grade chorus sing the national anthem at the WNBA Liberty game. So that is amazing. Under the June thirteenth, correct. Yes. What did I say, May? No, we're meeting June fifteenth. We're meeting June fifteenth. Yes. And yes. so that's when they're going to be at the WNBA. No, they're going to be at the WNBA on June thirteenth. Okay. That's the Tuesday of the. Because you said you're going to miss a meeting. I am going to miss a meeting, but for other reasons, I have a work conflict. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I'm going to miss. She's going to yeah. 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 There's a, there's a yeah. mid or. A, West Putt thing yeah. on June 13th, I will be missing because of that. But that oh, is okay. all of that is to say that the fourth grade <laughs> the fourth grade chorus will be the national anthem, 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 anthem at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn um, and cheering for the Liberty. Go Liberty. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Anything else for polling? All right then. Um, so then we'll move into items needed for the next Board of Education meeting. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we will be doing a reception at 7 p.m. ahead of the meeting um, for our to honor our volunteers uh, for this year. So we, if you can attend um, the earlier part of that, please do. Um, and then during the meeting, we will be hearing from our architects, which will be sure to be an exciting meeting. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So. Uh, I think that's really all. Um, and with that, uh, recommended action that the Board of Education enters into executive session to discuss ATU, Amalgamated Transportation Unit, contract negotiations, and the employment of a particular person or persons. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining. We expect that uh, we will adjourn immediately following executive sessions. So, yeah. thank you.